first, well, I'm not even the first, but the first here at City Hall, his first commitment to his brother who was assassinated here at City Hall. Um, as an elected official. As an elected official. You know, see, but I haven't given my, my story about James yet. You're going to hear a lot of testimony, which we just went through. Um, they're going to also see a video of him actually, the location where he was actually executed at, because he was executed. So let's be real about it. Um, the reason for his execution is still unknown, it's unclear, but I'm even going to clarify that for you. So his surprise. He don't even know that. But you need to understand something. Now community, now society, Afro-American men who come up and voice their concern against injustice in our community have always been a target. It is nothing new. However, Jeffrey's brother was on a totally different level at an early age and at an early time and at a crucial time in our community, located in Crown Heights. And as we backtrack and we go throughout the history, you start to understand exactly how devastating his loss really is. The morning he was executed, I was um, going to Florida. He was going to Florida for a uh, security con uh, convention. Um, and when we got off the plane, I think it was between 1 o'clock. The plane landed about 1 o'clock until 12 and 1. As soon as the plane landed, I got the call. A lot of people don't know that I was walking in Davis' shadow. My brother didn't even know I was walking in his shadow. But it's very important that you understand. It is not by coincidence that I'm sitting here with his brother. Hello. We still are making strides. So, thank you. We have made it to your brother's seat. Yes. We are here inside New York City Hall. My brother was a district leader, as well as a city councilman, and he had aspirations to go over to the White House, the President of the United States. Um, the one, one elected seat that he held, um, continue to build. Uh, this is the first commemoration here in City Hall as me being an elected official. Um, it's important that we continue to build co coalitions, continue giving the power back to the people. Uh, we did our first meeting, community board meeting, uh, last week. And after I thanked everyone, my next sentence was, power to the people. It's important that the people are back in the process. The politicians are on the side, wheeling and dealing and negotiating, and the people are not in the process. So the first thing is to get the people back in the process. Give the people back the power. So the elected officials know that they work for the people, and the people don't work for them. So that was the first order of business. 500 people came out, and we said, power to the people. The people have to have that power. And coming here intimately, we reiterated that even at the commemoration to say that we must take the power back. People must have the power. And the power is in the vote. The power is going to community board meetings. The power is in your voice expressing yourself. If you're not happy with that elected official, then you let that elected official know. You organize, and if need be, you bring 100 people to that elected official know. And if that doesn't work, you bring 200. Or 500. And then you begin to remove elected officials if they're not doing their job. The people have the power. We are hurting because they're willing and dealing and side rooms doing business deals with developers and so forth. And the people are being displaced. Education is terrible. And violence is on the rise with the children killing each other. And meanwhile, the elected official is living good. Not out there talking to the community, not out there talking to the children, so it's important to get that back, and that's what we're going to do. The legacy lives on in memory of my brother. I, I, I marched with James a couple of times, Davis, a couple of times as far as on the Stop the Violence program. Last time we marched, like two years ago, I think? Yes. Two years ago. With me, yeah. It was, a, it was a small march. I do think I got some of that footage. If I can find it, I'm going to play it for you guys. <laughs> I keep a lot of footage. So if I can find it, you're going to see it on this show. Um, but what do we do now to get the young brothers out in the streets involved in politics? Well, the first thing is, first thing we had to win. Right? With my past and history, uh, I was a teenage father. Um, I was a high school dropout. Um, I've been falsely arrested. So I, I understand where our young people live because I live it. So I understand. So first thing is to say that you got to get back on that horse. Never let anyone else define who you are. Today now they're saying honorable Jeffrey Davis. So you don't have to be stayed in that category. You can continue to build and continue to organize. So now 
now, look at my life. You know, it's, not, it's not Jeffrey Davis a thought, but that's, oh, you got no choice but to respect it. Over 4,000 people voted for me, and we continue to go on. So that's the first step. To let you know that I feel you, and I'm with you 100%. Now, we make our rounds to the community centers. Now we make our rounds to the public schools, and we sit and talk to our young people, and listen to our young people. And then when they say, you don't know what it's like, you say, oh, but I do. You don't know what it's like to be arrested and be harassed. Yes, I do. I lived it. I am you. You don't know what it's like. The school system is, the classrooms are too big, and I'm not listening. I don't hear the teacher, and I got pushed out. I didn't make it to the 10th grade. But I got my GED. I got my social degree. I got my bachelor's degree, and I got my master's So I didn't have to go like this. It's over. Because it's not over. Well, you don't know what it's like. I got a child. My girlfriend's pregnant. I was 17. What am I doing over there? And now I have two beautiful grandchildren that are in my life. So that means a child raised another child, didn't quit, stuck in there, then she has a family, and now she has children, and we're all, so you can get back on the horse. The goal is to have somebody talk to the young children that understands. But I'm angry because my friend was killed. Oh, I understand. My friend was killed too. My friends, my brother was killed. But I didn't pick up a gun and start shooting. I didn't pick up a gun and start killing. I changed that and said, let me put that into a positive effort to change the community so our, le our legacy continue to grow. I'll tell the kids that. We'll talk to them and say, I am you. I can relate. I know what it's like to experience a death. I know what it's like to be forced to arrest. I know what it's like to be harassed by the police. I know what it's like to be put in a label because things go on in your life and they say you'll never amount to anything. You're 18 years old? The same people said when I was 18 years old that I'll never get a higher education. Not only did I get my education, but I got a higher than they got. <laughs> the same people who said we'll never win off. The elected the officials, he'll never win. Because we're not with him. Power to the people. You're not with me. The people are with me. We built. And, and to be fair, he told me that. Because I did say, what are you doing, man? No, we can't do that. We was at Wingate. We was at Wingate. That's yeah, right. I'll keep it 100. Keep it 100. I'm not going to miss it. I was one of those naysayers. And I'll keep it 100. And I'm fair about this. I told you we were winning. I told you we were winning. I told you we were winning. He didn't believe me. I, I'm not mad. I told him. I'm not mad. I told him. I said, I said, yo, listen, go for it and do what you're doing. I and, told and him. He did. When I cried out, love yourself at Wingate, 5,000 people said stop the balance. When I said love yourself, 5,000 people yelled out before I told them to stop the balance. They said stop the balance. When I said love yourself, when I heard the audience say stop the balance, I knew we would win there. And I said, is we going to win that victory? <laughs> and look where we at today. Lo and behold, look where we at today. Lo and behold, all of them. So, Jeffrey Davis. All of you out there, you now know that this is possible. You have your constituents in office. Do yourself a favor. Go out and support your elected officials and please come by Mr. Davis. Okay, so come on by McCollum Heights. We're on Brooklyn Avenue between East Park and Union Street. I represent the 43rd Assembly District. I am the district leader, state committee man. I represent the Democratic Party, 43rd Assembly District, Jeffrey Davis. And that was just step one. Right? OJ Sky's Davis. the limit. Hey, peace. Shot my brother from here, and then the sharpshooter police officer 
shot him every bullet, not missing one, because there's never one in a hole in a, in a wall. Mm -hmm. There's no chips here. So that means every bullet hit this person. So if he gets hit with two bullets and falls, and he shot five times, there should be bullets in the hallway, in the wall. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying is what I'm saying. And that's all that I'm saying. Yeah. Right. And then this person's body was immediately removed. Well, we couldn't have an autopsy. Not my brother's, but this person that did the shooting to my brother's body was moved and cremated. Mm -hmm. This person was immediately removed and cremated. So we couldn't do an autopsy on his body or see the bullets that was inside of him because his body was removed and cremated immediately, instantly. Mm -hmm. At that particular time, there was no cameras. Mm -hmm. Now there's cameras, we advocated for cameras mm -hmm. to be in the chamber. But at that time, there was no cameras. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's just all I'm saying. It's just food for thought. I just gave it food. But we cry out, and we build, and we continue to live, and say, love yourself, stop the violence. 11 years later, we still stand here together. I didn't come back alone. But I came back with us as a people, and say, let's continue to build. And we cry out, love yourself, stop the violence. Rabbi, would you come? And Reverend Bogan, give us a prayer, comfort. Then we're going to go back, watch the film, eat, and close it out. Okay, right. Oh God, our Creator and our Redeemer, we are grateful for your loving kindness and for your presence. And we pray that we continue to carry the tradition, the legacy of James Davis forward with our lives, preaching the message of nonviolence and peace and strength in our communities, that, 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 that we build a community that everyone has an opportunity, everyone is, 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 is safe, and oh God, help us to build that with courage and not fear. We pray for the Davis family that you would just touch them and continue to encourage them and give them the things they need to move forward. together working hand and glove. When this happened here with James C. E. Davis, we could not even stand on our feet. You know, it, we were here, and it's like if we did not believe what really happened. But after God, the Lord knows best. He has left a legacy, as the rabbi just said, for you to carry on. And I've been seeing you pass it up and down in the neighborhood, and you have to carry on James E. Davis' legacy just like how we fought to make sure that Crown Heights... There's no coincidence. It's let us have peace. Peace, love, and healing. The legacy that has been set forth by this pioneer, this trailblazer, whom I can say proudly I went to high school with. And... Uh, 
who was cut down before his time, uh, that his legacy stands immortal. On which we, our children, grandchildren, the generations to come, can build upon and truly accomplish his vision Peace. And he quality. I was young, I think I was like maybe like 13, if I remember. Uh, and I had the privilege of going to my first international trip to Zimbabwe. Uh, and I didn't know much, but uh, I sat next to James Davis on the plane, and all he kept on playing with me was tic tac toe. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I remember that from being around him and then my next really more encounter was, well, we couldn't find him. They was like the, he was like the missing person in Zimbabwe. He was all over the place because uh, uh, him and uh, Bashir, Anthony Jones, uh, went with us as well. And I, I just remember that um, he was very influential in terms of really trying to help out how can he bring uh, resources back to the USA to you know his to his district uh, and um, you know he when when the incident happened I was just so shocked uh, I I didn't you know I wouldn't have expected that it could be someone of his caliber because of the nature of how so many people had he touched and so approachable he was uh, so I, I just um, you know commendable to be a part of uh, uh, you know his legacy uh, by um, attaching with his brother. You know, it's a difference from when you have a loved one and you're going out there with someone else, but it's a difference when you have a loved one and you continue that journey on and you're doing a wonderful job. So uh, while we up here, I want everyone to just give Jeffrey Davis a big hand yes. for doing all the work that he has done. And to the uh, he has, you know, he has, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a battle and it's not, you know, uh, Rem Bogue and I speak about this all the time. This is not uh, where you deal with uh, spirit. This is a spiritual battle. It's not more personal or fleshly. It's more of a spiritual thing. So for Jeffrey to win back the district leader seat that his brother once held mm -hmm. uh, is definitely in divine favor and divine reasoning that the Most High will be able to let that happen. So we, we thank God and we thank uh, all of those that voted for him and we thank God for that. This is the time. The time is now. Uh, for your time is this for this to happen for him to be able to continue the legacy of James E. Davis. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else? I just I just want I just oh, want to say you know, my name is Professor Marcus. I'm the director of Brooklyn advocating for Brooklyn. And I just want to say that James was very instrumental to me. I was the youngest black association president on Lincoln Road. And I remember when I reached out to him, because there was a lot of violence over there on Lincoln Road, you couldn't sleep at night. I was working at, I was working at um, the Port of Parking then, and every night my wife was calling me, telling me that, um, hey, this shooting going on over there. So I got mad one day, and it happened so that uh, I went to the, the black president at that time, Ms. Hazel Ames, and I said to her, I said, you have to do something. She said to me, there's nothing she could do. It was out of her hands. The people wouldn't stand up. I said, well, let's call a meeting and see where the people was at. And I remember he came over to the church on Lincoln Road and, and right here to Lincoln Road and uh, Northern Avenue, where we used to keep the meeting. And he kind of, you know, give us advice on the meeting. And that night, they, um, they vote me as president of the Black Association. And from then on, he said, look, anytime, anything you need, just ask him. And this was back in 1983. And I said, I said to him, I said, look, I'm gonna need your help because these guys are gangsters over here. He said, they ain't gangsters, they're just a bunch of punks. I remember that when he 
when I walked up to them, to the young man, and I said, look, if you guys don't stop, you're going to have to walk with me. I said, it's a new sheriff in town. And one guy said, well, that sheriff is a dead sheriff. I said, well, I'm not alone. I got a big brother with me. And I remember calling, calling your brother. And him and, um, I don't know if you know, Detective Brown, this 70, 71st precinct, they came over there. And I point out a, a, number, a number of youngsters who was causing trouble in the neighborhood. And they arrested them, took them to the precinct, and they kept them in the precinct for three days. And from then on, the people realized that we were serious about what we were doing. And we turned that, that block around, and then, we, then they said, well, don't stop here. And I went on to start forming Black Association, reviving the Black Association because of the violence. They couldn't have no Black Association around here. The people were terrorized. And I started organizing the blocks around there. All through the March, 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 we counted 15 blocks that I brought back together, put back together. And that's when I started. So, so with his help, we were able to bring change. Not just my help, but his help. And I just want to you know, thank Ms. Davis, thank his brother for carrying on this legacy. You know, it's all about peace within our community. Without, without the community, there will be no unity. And I want to thank you guys for the work that you, you're doing and for keeping us together as a people. That the current crop in the city council could learn from his example. He was everywhere on the streets, he knew everyone, he liked everyone, he was very funny, he was very witty, and he was always saying amusing things. And one of the last times I saw him, I was walking up Bergen Street in Cross the Tides, and somebody ahead of me was walking their dog. And the dog stopped to um, do its business. And James Davis was driving in his car towards us. He saw this person stopping to clean up after the dog. He stopped the car, he got out, and he thanked this person for cleaning up after his dog. And he was just always like that. And I miss him enormously. I thought he would be heading for Washington, D.C. before long. He was so good. Anyway, he was a great example for representing the people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There are so many shootings. Too many people are dying. What's going on with all these killings? What's going on? Children killing children. What's going on? There's too much violence. What's going on? Too many of us dying. What's going on? I'm just asking. Young boys out here shooting and blasting. I'm just trying to make it home tonight. Just trying to see I'm more than life. What's going on? I'm just asking. Young boys out here shooting and blasting. I'm just trying to make it home tonight. Just trying to see I'm more than life. What's going on? Can you answer the question? 
Hey!